Greetings, folks. Irish Trekkie, back another Nerd Escape podcast. And with me, as always, we have the amazing Trek it's, Collector. It's myself, yes, the Trek Collector. Thanks for that lovely introduction, Damien. And yeah, we're back to wreck your heads one more time. This time, at the last of the year. So we'd like to, at this moment, wish you all a happy Christmas. Hope you're all getting ready to stuff into your turkey. And it's Doctor Who! Oh, Doctor Who. Doctor Who, oh, yeah. Who and are you binging that? Star Trek? <laughs> no, not yet. No, I'm going to leave it until literally... Because cause there's only nine episodes, I'm going to kind of do a full day's binge uh, before mm-hmm. this discovery kicks off. Because I know, Linda, I put up... Uh, if, if you're following us on uh, our Facebook page... Check uh, the link below. Um, we were doing polls, and it was an interesting one about the Maclet. I think that's the knife. Yeah, I can't remember. The Maclet is the small dagger esque um, yes, Klingon she, weapon. She brought up a great point that did we see it? Uh, I think we did, but I can't remember. So I'm gonna. That's one thing I'm gonna be binge watching for. It's very yeah. unusual not to see a Klingon without his knife. But um, I think I think we saw it on you know hip hip placement. Yes, but whether it's, it's we saw it in action. I don't yeah. know, actually. Yeah, but the, the polls have been fun in our little kind of uh, mid-season break. And I'm actually delighted to actually... I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by this. I'm very surprised by this. But the last... The second last poll I did there was on the ships. And we had to do it in a two-part just to throw in all the ships. So and ships. So, like, five ships from each category made it through to the final. And Discovery held their own. And I'm delighted to see that because the reaction from Discovery was... Fans did not like the appearance of Discovery. Now, she hasn't walked the pole, but she's still in front, which is great. She's so gaining ground. To... And it's it's just, for me, it's Star Trek repeating itself as well. Yeah. It's, it's like the Enterprise D. Huge departure from the original series. And like that, um, when you read back when it was introduced, you know, there was a love-hate relationship. Same with Discovery. But it is winning people over because they're seeing Discovery become a character in herself you know um but again as you say it's not it's not a walk over for discovery but it's it's good to see it representing quite positively for a change yeah i I, I, i've always firmly believed the ship is a character and again like your characters in a tv show the ship will grow in you so i think it's interesting that we did this poll and mid-season break if we had probably all the concept artwork before the show i think it would have been between the Gagarin and the Shinjo because they're, they're actually running very it's a strong second and third between those two ships and again I think it's credit to John Eves I think the interesting thing about the show and I think we have complained about it before we're not getting to see that more of the ships which we do like from our Star Trek mm. um, but in fairness it's great to see the likes of John who's just so talented to be given a free reign and do more ships which is you know what I mean? It's the first Star Trek series that we're not just seeing kit bashes and stuff like that. Yeah. And and one of the nice things I find with with this series, and I don't know if I actually ever thought, brought it up before or whether you brought it up before, but there is a definite and a very strong theme, even though we're only nine episodes in. You know, like when you look at the ships, for example, like you have the likes of John and the crew, there's a great creative team there. And then you have like the Klingon side of things as well. But like when you look at the Federation, there's quite a departure in some of the designs, but you can kind of see there's reason to it. Yep. And the naming uh, conventions off it as well, I think is very, very good. And the, the variety of ships that we've seen, you know, it's not just our Excelsior, which I love, you know, but like not every ship is the Excelsior and the Reliant and yeah, stuff well, like that. But it's, it's been absolutely if you go back ship to the candy. Hist- if you go... Sorry, you were breaking up there. And I, I just didn't really hear you there. So, um, if you go back to the history of Star Trek, you got to look at it like a lot of money was spent on the, the original Enterprise, so that was it, and it made sense that they had to reuse that ship for other ships in the fleet, which is fine. That's that's the TV mm-hmm. budget that they had at the time. Then we jump forward to the next generation, where we've seen ships that were used from the movies. Again, models were very, very expensive. Now, I love using the old school model in any kind of... Practicals are yes, amazing. Practicals are amazing. But again, you got to look at it. And then when you go jump forward to Deep Space Nine, again, it was kit bash territory. Again, the same towards like the Battle of Wolf 359 was the first time we started seeing newer Federation ships, stuff that we hadn't seen before, but a lot of them were kit bashes. Mm. And that's credit to... 
Rick Steinbach that just, you know, and a couple of the guys getting inspiration, using marker highlighters and stuff like that. I know they laugh and they're going to go, oh, they'll cringe, but that's what they did, you know? And I think it's credit, like a limited budget, looking at what they could do to the ships, also trying to protect the ships as well at the same time, having to put them back, because we did see different variants of um, plenty of starships back in TNG. Then we got to Deep Space Nine, and unfortunately, when it came to Deep Space Nine, we started going into CGI, which was mm. great, but instead of seeing new starship, Starfleet vessels, we kind of got cooler alien ships. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, the Gemini ships were fairly, fairly cool, but... If you look at the likes of the Breen ship that came in when CGI was in the south, because we know that that whole battle scene by season seven was done CGI. So mm. I suppose it's very hard to just come up and throw in new Federation ships. I think it would have... I suppose if you look back on that big battle scene in yeah. Deep Space Nine, I think as being a Star Trek ship fan, you're going to miss the point of that battle if they had thrown in five or six different class federation ships that we hadn't seen before because you're gonna go oh hang on what's that what's that what so exactly I, you know exactly, i can yeah. understand that and then when we got to voyager she was lost in the delta quadrant and you know there was a practical model done the voyager but they, they did switch to cgi on her so we got the alien ships of the week mm. which was fairly cool because where voyager was but they were cleverly enough they were able to you know throw in a couple of episodes of Voyager where we got Federation ships. So we got mm -hmm. the Equinox, we got the Prometheus. Um, so, you know, it's... The Rhode fun. Island. The Rhode Island, yes. Yeah, the well, Dauntless, which technically was full Federation. Yeah, <laughs> the Dauntless. Oh, that, that's still a great I episode. Liked, I like that ship. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's you're, you're right bang on the button. Like, you know, most of the new ships, bar the hero ships of the series, were created in the movies. And then migrated over to television, and that was this. That was true for the likes of First Contact as well, where we saw a lot more ships being brought into the frame. Well, as we're well. back into CGI stage, and that was the exactly. perfect time to, you know what I mean? Finally, finally, because we know, you know, some of the guys from Deep Space Nine worked on First Contact, and that mm. that was a more ideal. I think, I do think in season seven, Deep Space Nine, when we seen the battle scenes, if you threw in those ships from First Contact, yeah, that appeared, it would have you would have lost the whole the feel of this big epic battle yeah but with exactly. first contact you were sitting in it's a new movie you know they're going up against the borg and it was the way and it opened up fairly quick because we start with Worf on the defined which is fairly cool but you yeah. do see these new ships you're like yes let's do it let's do yeah. it but that's great and you know it's 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 credit to discovery you know we, we had that theatrical vibe on uh, a series here where we're getting all of these bloody lovely ship goodies um, mixed in with a uh, good story and, you know, good characters and everything else as well. But, um, you know, if you haven't, check the link below. You can see the polls. Or if for some reason you're not on Facebook, let us know in the comments below. What's your standout ship, be it Klingon, be it Federation? And, and um, no one's wrong on any of these. It's just great to actually see it's subjective. the fans. You know what I mean? It's fantastic. You know what I mean? Um as I said, like it's interesting, but I'm just delighted to see that the Discovery is starting to win fans over the ship it's herself. I think it's yeah. it's actually brilliant, and that's that's typical history repeating itself because I know a lot of people didn't like the Enterprise D at the start. I always loved that ship. I just what I, I always call it like the the, the Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce of the fleet, and yeah, you know yeah. having Captain John Luke Picard, Patrick Stewart command the ship. It's just. You know, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Just like Lorca is perfect in the command oh, seat of Discovery. You absolutely. know, there, there's the the marriage made in heaven. But um, you know, as you said, it's it's you know, it's it's very subjective and, and stuff like that. And we're we're talking new Trek. Um, bit of information that came out recently as well was from Netflix about you know their 2017 ratings and Star Trek Discovery placed very high. I think it was either in the top four or the, even the top two of the shows that brought people together. So this show was watched by families and, you know, friends and communities grew around it as well. And I, lo I loved hearing that as well. And it ranked up there with the likes of Stranger Things and some of the other very high heavy hitters um, in the Netflix range. And that, that's on 188 countries as well. Yeah. So that's awesome. It's, it, it's fantastic. And uh, as we've said it before, the Star Trek debates have kicked off on the internet. People are kind of trying to 
you know, the the obvious one being um, Decker being mentioned, and you know what I mean. Everyone like, okay, we might be getting a little bit excited, but the minute Decker was announced, everyone's kind of like, oh my god, is that Decker from you know the motion picture? Blah blah blah. This, which is great, you know what I mean. Like, songs. regardless <laughs> about whether it is, whether it's not, maybe we are jumping the gun. Who cares? We're talking about Star Trek, and it's great. It's it's great to go onto fan pages and actually see Star Trek being discussed in a new way about something new as opposed to the Star Trek fan and Star Trek fan against like who knows more <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean who knows their history more um, you know those come here we love those debates but they do get tiresome it's great to talk something new it's, it, it's refreshing exactly and on the subject of new um, mm-hmm. we've been you know, as as a fandom, you know, since 09, we've had something to talk about, be it the Abrams movies moving into 2016 when we heard the rumors of the new series. And then it's been Discovery pretty much ever since. Um, but now we've gotten information we talked about in the last cast a little bit as well. Um, but it's gaining a lot of traction and seems to be very much happening. But Tarantino and Star Trek and mm. uh, yeah, a whole new uh, conversation can be had about this one. What are your What were your thoughts initially when you, you started hearing the rumors of Tarantino wanting to do and direct a Star Trek movie? I think it can only be a good thing. Um, as I said previous podcast, I think it's, it, it, it's a very very good thing. He's a Star Trek fan, so I can't see him trying to. If he is a fan, I don't think he's going to try and whitewash and just completely change up what he's enjoyed. Now, let's be realistic at the moment, like going back to the glory days where we had our TOS crew do movies, Paramount and CBS were the same company. They're not anymore. So that's how the JJ verse came to be because they had to, Paramount had to put their own twist mm-hmm. on Star Trek. Um, I think it will be JJ Universe, unfortunately. You know, unless a miracle does happen and Paramount and CBS do join back together, that could change things around. But as much as I, w- I would like to see the old guard take up and do a movie, I have to say, and I said it in the last podcast, I think Star Trek Beyond was absolutely fantastic. And I do think these guys need another crack at the whip. Um, I think it'd be mm. very fitting if this is going to be the last movie, I think with Quentin Tarantino directing it, I think this would be a very fitting way to sign out from the J.J. Reverse movies. I do think they can... Like, 2009 wasn't bad. Into Darkness was okay. <laughs> but 2009 wasn't bad. And I do have to say, I've always said it, I think the cast for the JJ universe has been absolutely amazing. And yeah. they are great actors. I'd love to see them get another movie. I'd love to see them. I think Quentin, Quentin Tarantino is going to bring in a new audience, which is fantastic. I just hope at the moment now, what I would be worried about Star Trek at the moment is CBS and Paramount now because it's really popular at the moment, exploiting it. Um, I know we were we were hearing rumors about Nick Myers at one point going off and doing a kind of a can series, which I would like to see. Mm-hmm. But you know, we don't overflood the market. You know, we've got Discovery going strong at the moment. Let it find its legs. I don't mind another JJ movie coming soon. And then if CBS wanted to go down the line of yeah. doing Star Trek movies again. Um, it'd be interesting to see how 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 they go about doing it. Um, yeah. But at the moment, Trek does seem popular. Um, it would be nice to see Captain John Luke Picard reprise his role. Do we want to see it in a JJ verse? I don't know. I see Hard that to say. But if it's well written, yeah. I know Quentin Tarantino liked. Um, he loved Yesterday's Enterprise, and he loved all oh, the one with the. He loved City on the Edge of City Forever. on the Edge of Forever, which is an absolute fantastic. Yeah, TOS episode. So, you know, and actually, in fairness to the guys as well, in Star Trek Continues, they did a fantastic episode with on the CEO of the Age of Forever, which included the Doomsday Machines. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it opens the realms there. And if JJ movies continue through, they should be covering some of the five year missions by now, which. See, following on from follow on following on from beyond. Yeah. See on the edge of forever going back now. I know the guys of Star Trek continues pulled off that script, but something maybe similar to that, except of don't rob 
Star Trek continuous script because it was a great See, script. that's it. Like, you know, like, as you, as, as you brought up a few points there, like, what we know is that there is that standard agreement with Paramount and CBS. You know, you get the TV, we get the movies, there's other um, royalties and uh, details to that agreement. Um, so, unless CBS merge back and take control, you know, we're either looking at an Abrams verse because Abrams potentially is going to be involved in this as a producer or do we do another variant on it as well there's a lot of possibilities here and um we know that tarantino's involvement in it stipulates that if he wants it as an r-rated uh movie and the reason why we're talking about it now is that it has gained momentum because a screen writer has been attached to the project as well and that's um mark l smith and I didn't really know a huge amount about Mark, but I know he's involved in The Revenant. But it's great to see it getting traction here. And you're right, like, you know, Tarantino's movies are episodes of choice for Star Trek have been, you know, time orientated. You know, City in the Age of Forever, Yesterday's Enterprise, but both very, very good Star Trek. And as you mentioned in the last cast as well, and today, he's a fan. And we know what fans can do to Star Trek. Look at yeah. Simon Pegg. Look at look at uh, Star Trek continues as well. You know when a fan is involved, it is the project kind of becomes more than the sum of its parts. Just like Discovery as well. Like we've gotten to talk to people in the community um, involved in Discovery, like via Twitter, you know, Facebook, and stuff like that as well. And these guys are you know hardcore fans. Like look look at Ted Sullivan, look at John Eves, but to name a few. And that's where Star Trek becomes its own. Just like Star Star Wars. And yeah. you know when it's done by fans, it, it just excels. And just See, to kinda, it, if you look yeah. at JJ, and I know his hands were tied with Star Trek, uh, the two thousand and nine series. We know his hands were tied because a lot of people don't know that, and I'm not going to get into it. But we know his hands were tied. They had to change things around. Hmm. Now he did go a little bit OTT, in my opinion. But anyway, there's a fan. We know his big fandom was Star Wars. Yeah. And if you look at Star Wars at the moment, he hasn't changed it up too much. He's continued on the lines of what was done before, which is fantastic. But as, as you said, like the damage was done for 2009, I think was Into Darkness, where the fan support just disappeared. And it's unfortunate that had a knock-on effect to beyond. Mm. I think the great thing is you introduce Quentin Tarantino into this now. It will bring the box office right back up because I, I do really feel sorry for everyone that was involved in Beyond and especially Simon Pegg because it should have done much better. It wasn't as office. successful as it should have been because it was it was, yeah. it was it was a really good movie. The damage was done before the, the movie beforehand. This is when you go into doing movies and movies and movies and Hollywood is guilty of getting a big director and coming in here and taking something and bringing mm. it back. And I think if you get somebody involved, as we've said, a fan, like look at Ted's work on Discovery, look what Simon Pegg did to Beyond, look at Star Trek Continues, look what Vic did. You bring fans into it. They keep the essence of what the show was all about. They try and keep the appearance and looks as close as it did. Mm. Uh, instead of trying to put their own mark on it. And I think Hollywood is very guilty of... Somebody new getting a blockbuster. I'm not going to name anything because I don't want to really put my foot in it. But there's one now that I do really like. It's just been horrible. Like, you know, a show of mine from the 80s. That I really loved. And God, I don't know. But again, this nonsense of coming in and going, I want to put my mark. Show respect to the original. Get somebody involved. Stop trying to make it your Star Trek. It's that's. Gene, mm. it's Gene Star Trek. You know, he came up with the idea. Show it. You know well, what I mean? Yeah. And I'm only using that as an example. Like, there, this is the thing in Hollywood. It's a, just a vicious wheel. There's no original concepts anymore. It's like, oh, what's like, and we'll probably see this now coming again. They'll be looking at TV shows, cartoons. They'll be looking at that generation that's going 18 and they'll be going, right, we want to do a blockbuster. What was their big cartoon or what did they all watch? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Let's take this and let's make a movie out of it. And then what they do is completely change it up. It doesn't. The visuals don't represent what they grew up with as a cartoon nine times out of ten anymore yeah. in Hollywood, which is a shame. 
That's yeah. the point. That's my rant over. But I, I, I know, I know what you mean. And visuals do play a huge part. I, I do get that. But you know, if the story isn't there, um, it's, 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 it's going to crash and burn. And I know Discovery was very volatile in the discussions because visuals, mainly because of a certain race and some one or two ships. But I think people kind of slowly got over it. Uh, because the story and my headphones fall off, but um, I'm I, I'm trying to picture Tarantino in the visual styles of Abrams, and I just can't. I don't know why. Like it's oh, it's, I can easily see it's it. You too. Know? I, I, I I don't know. And I like, will it be Abrams? Like will it be the old crew? I don't know. I think I think it could be something else. Um, just like. Okay, I'm, I'm going to compare it. I, I know visually it's not the same. Uh, it's identical. But look at the likes of Rogue One, Force Awakens. You know, we have the same universe, but two very good movies, but two completely different casts set in the same universe. That could be something that can be done. You know, it could be in the JJ verse, yeah, but see, just with different visuals. This is where I'd be a little bit worried at the moment for Star Trek's sake at the moment. Star Trek Discovery's doing well. Let them hold our own. If JJ wants to pick up the torch, stick with his previous crew. Um, let them do it because we don't want the market all of a sudden oversaturated with Star Trek. Like, do it right. Give Discovery another year before you start looking at doing another TV series. Because, yeah, okay, great. Star Trek Discovery is doing well. This impulse of like literally going in there, oh, let's get another TV show going because it's doing great for Netflix. Look what happened with Battlestar Galactica. Capricorn. You know what I mean? They threw out a spin-off, a prequel. It just failed miserably. You know what I mean? It's Be clever. You know what I mean? Keep the momentum going. Focus on Discovery. I'd like to see JJ and Tarantino continue on with the JJ movies because, you know, we're due a movie. That, that's fine. Mm. But, like, let's not try and take as much cake as we can. You know what I mean? Because... Yeah, like I love Star Trek. I would love to see another Star Trek series come about maybe next year where Discovery's established itself and we can get into getting used to a new crew and a new ship. I think if if all of a sudden, because Discovery's done well by season one, they say, oh, let's get another show in production. Let's do another movie or let's change up the movies. Well, look, we, I, we I know where you're coming from, it. but I, I, w- I would actually disagree with you as well because, you know... Discovery is doing well. It's mid season, you know, they're working on season two, but it, it does take a while to, you know, get a show up and running as well. So, you know, I, I would say fair fair enough be thinking about it and I would love it. And oh, I know be thinking like about it. Caprica, that that's one example. And I and I liked elements of Caprica. You know, I thought th- there were there, there was good um good stories to be told there because of the prequel. But again, to go back to a comparison between Star Trek and Star Wars. And I don't want to open a big debate with that. But like, look at Star Wars right now. We have the uh, new trilogy and we have the offshoot movies as well. So we'll have the Han Solo movie. We have um, Rogue One. That's going on in between the trilogies as well. So same universe, but different stories. And some of them are prequels. And then we have the animated series, which has been going on for the last 200 years, basically, with Star yeah. Wars, you know. Well, but I, that, I, I, but that's I agree not with you. Sat- you that, that's not brought... saturation there, no, you know. No, and that, but I, I agree with that. you. Yeah, no, I, and I, I do agree with you on one point that you brought up before. An animated series is well overdue for Star Trek. And I think that is something that wouldn't oversaturate the market. Like, if we're going to do, like, miniseries and stuff like that's fine. Like, we heard about this other project that was meant to be happening i haven't really heard too much about that at the moment but as i said no that's that would be my one fear i think if you go back to the heyday of star trek in the 90s and you had the next generation i think it was three four years into it and then we had deep space nine and it was well nicely spread out so like at one point you were getting two star trek episodes in the one week Mm. which was fantastic and it was enough it was nice watching but like you know i mean we don't need to have and Star just, Trek movies, Star you, Trek shows coming out of our ears. Do you think that worked, you know, because those shows were set at the same time, but just in different locations? Yes, but the thing is, and I do agree, we had Dave on a while ago, and I do agree that, you know what I mean, what the fans really, really want is something set after Nemesis. 
So it would be interesting to see that if they did decide to do, say, Discovery and then do something after Nemesis, it'd be very interesting to see because I do think the key ingredients, what they had in the 90s when they did the spin-off shows, yes, they were set at the same time. Mm. I do think that was part of it because you, you could get what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, and it kept it it kept the momentum in each individual series, and I think, uh, looking back, I think it was such a good move for Voyager to be shot so far. You know that yeah. it can do its own thing and still be completely different, but still set in the same time. You know, and even at the same time, the shows stayed independent from one another. But I think there was the one Voyager episode was when um, Belana Torres found out that Alan McKees were dead. Which was a great episode, by the thing. But if you didn't watch Deep Space Nine, you would no. In fairness, no. In fairness, it, it was covered well because you know what I mean. It did stay independent, but it still referenced Deep Space Nine. But you didn't have to watch Deep Space Nine to understand it. Like they and there was the piece. handover, you know, the pilots, you know, the kind of quarks Quark in the yeah. mouth and stuff like that, you know, which could bring people into Deep Space Nine as well. So as you said, it wasn't there. Were, there weren't awkward crossover episodes or stupid cameos you know that they were done kind of tastefully as well but um you know it will be interesting to see the state of star trek in in the next five years um mm. from where we are right now but if i had to if i had to choose um let discovery you know go on and grow and achieve success after success um tarantino to take uh, an off spin type of movie not tied into the first three but his own twist. Um, be interesting to see what he'll do. I really like his uh, direct directorial style. Um, but I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what will actually come out of uh, out, of, out of his movies. Maybe you know Abrams will do maybe one more movie. I don't know. Um, and I'd say at that stage, then we'll probably have another series be it animated or tv you know but probably kept to the traditional streaming model that's now because that seems to be working very well it's gotten great subscribers into cbs all access i think it's been very good for uh netflix and as you said you know what people want is a post nemesis and we know from previous like the most watched star trek in the uk is voyager so do people want to go back to the vast roots of ex- exploration you know, new boldly go where no one has gone before kind of s- style. You know, will 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 the executives cash in on that kind of uh, vibe? I, I think I think it's down to executives to be looking and start thinking about what the fan wants. You know, the easy wins. Be very 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 careful. Like, you know, we already had it with like Discovery coming back, and there's no point just signing the likes of Fuller and saying, "Oh, he's a big Star Trek fan, and the fans will love this, and let him do what he wants." No, it's simple. You're the executives. Do your research. Ask us what we want. Simple oh. as. <laughs> then you get your executive producer and you turn around and you tell him, we want a Star Trek series. We want it done after Nemesis. That's what the fans want. There you go. Assemble your team. Off you go. Mm. And that's what needs to be done. There's too much of a chance where CBS has been done in the past is where they're just getting... That we're lucky enough in the next generation and we were lucky enough that people stayed true to the grassroots of Star Trek you know but you know we've now in fairness there's more to the JJ thing and I, I, I think destroying Vulcan is a big you know there was no need to do stuff like that no. but anyway that it happened it's done it's done it's done but you see this is the danger when you just get somebody that's top of their career and you think oh if we get him a to Star Trek, it's going to bring in people to the box office. Mm. It doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? Look what not, happens to Into Darkness. Look not what in, not in the long darkness. term. Or yeah. sorry, Into Darkness as well, but the fall off effect was beyond and beyond is the best out of the best out of the tree, yeah. which sort of done well. And that's, you know, that's realistically, that's the fans. And look, let's be honest, in the day and age that we live in, you know, people aren't that pushed to go to the cinema anymore. And if they hear mixed reviews about a movie, they'll say, you know what? I'm just going to sit and wait until it's available on Netflix or I'm just going to sit back that's and it. wait until like, you know, and that's it now. And like, we're um, seeing that right now with the last Jedi, you know, yeah. I, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I know it's done very well at the box office cause you know, people were anxious to go, but everyone that I've talked to that's gone to it, you know, hasn't given me glowing reviews and I'm kind of going great opening 20 minutes, but just, just 
there's just a story in there. That I just it just felt to me as though they just wanted to cast a certain member, mm. and they needed to fit him in. Uh, at the end of the day, is if you actually see this story arc that I'm talking about, it ends up being pointless. So, yeah. you know, it was 20 minutes that didn't need to be in there, and I think if you cut that 20 minutes out. I think it would have been a very, very good movie. Look, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. The humor is maybe a little bit overplayed, but I heard that. Yeah, it's it is a good movie. It's just it's drawn out when there's no need to be drawn out. Um, mm-hmm. It has great moments, you know. But again, you see, this this is the this is the world we live in, and I'm glad you said that, Damien, because I didn't go and see Thor Ragnarok. I didn't go and see DC's one, uh, the Justice League. Justice League, yeah. Straight off because the circle of friends that I'm in said, nah. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? Why waste the money? And that's. I will sit back and wait until it's on Netflix or sit back and wait until, you know what I mean? I can get the movie. Why? Yeah. You know. And that's the power of the public, you know. It's in that's, people, that's, in people the, that's trust. the way it's gone these days. You know yeah. what I mean? Like people want to go to the cinema now these days and be wooed and walk out and go, you know what? That's brilliant. Because I think the day of, you know, going to a movie and coming out, there's nothing worse. Let's be honest. I think if you asked everybody who hates going to the cinema, you have your hopes and expectations built up on a movie and you walk out and you do deflated. Yeah. Now, that was me the last Star Wars movie it was kind of like ah oh, there's it's yeah you, you're excited to go and see something so you know and then if you know like I know you Damien so if you kind of said it and I know Dave and Olinda and the group that we stay in contact mm-hmm. with the whole lot and once I value their opinions and if I hear that I'm like I don't want to go to the movies and go I'm not going to rush off now I might just wait yeah you don't I get don't that sense of deflation again, on your couch forward to seeing something and then going oh yeah. you know what I mean so I think that's I think a lot of us are like that. So I, I I know it's very hard for the cinemas these days. I know, you know, not as many people are going to the movies these days. It is as as you said. I think rightly so. You've pointed it out. It, it's more at home online streaming. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how the future of movies will start to go. Yeah, with par- piracy and so forth like that. It wouldn't strike me now soon enough that you know what I mean it's something that they might actually start looking at that. You know what I mean? We'll see pay add-ons on Netflix where the likes of they make get this the week's big premiere, and then you go, yeah, we'll pay Netflix nine ninety nine to watch it once while it's out in the cinemas. Yeah, Could in the happen. comfort of your own home. Everyone, most a lot of people, have big screens now, and the comfort factor and that's, stuff like that's that. That's the way you can see it going with the movies. You know, my me too, me too. I know the experience. I, I, like where oh, I'm from, wrong, we so don't have like that movie. I'm gonna go to the cinema. That's the if big. I'm gonna watch a sci fi, yeah. I'm gonna go, but like you're gonna have a lot of people that will still be like that. But yeah, I think in other words, to, to have your blockbusters make the money that they need because yeah. like, oh, producing a movie is ain't cheap. Yeah, and look at TV now, you know, it's it's the budget is up there. Like, if you if you I, I can't remember what the figure we, we came up with, but <coughs> like with the 15 episodes of Discovery, it's 15 hours of Star Trek, you know, but. You know, multi million per episode. It's up there with with big movies and stuff like that as well. Oh, my headphones are gone again. But um, you know, it's 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 just it's a very interesting time. And um, yeah, it's it's. I feel sorry for kind of Star Trek, Star Wars fans now because they've kind of uh, they know what Trekkies have felt uh, at certain occasions through uh, their theatrical and TV life as well. But uh, listen, you know, no spoilers down below. But uh, let us know what you thought about uh, the Last Jedi potentially in the comments uh, anyway but um yeah again we're talking new trek um i didn't think we'd be talking a new movie at this stage of the year no nope. and well, um, it, it, come here we always knew star trek 4 was around the corner hopefully you know the actors want it but not tarantino it's pretty no. clear <laughs> what not tarantino and it's really no. picked up a pace wow. yeah but the, the actors wanted star trek 4 they've been asking and it's, it's, you know what i mean they're mm. not going to put their lives on hold they're not you know are we filming this aren't we they have they want to get their on. careers they have their careers to think about, but like, you know, th- there hasn't been any of the JJ crew that are kind of like, no, I'm not going to go back and do a Star Trek four. They seem to want it, which is great. You know what I mean? But mm. I'd say, I'd, I'd like to see, I'd like to see it done. Tarantino. I can see a, a, a Quentin Tarantino style movie done with the JJ crew that we have at the moment. I can, I, I think, um, I just think, I that. I think know. Scotty could turn out to have, very very good lines um mr red 
Mr. Blue. Mr. Red, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Um, Gold. <laughs> but there's a lot, you know what I mean? If you use a time travel episode, there's lots that can fit into the Quentin Tarantino bracket, which would be a little bit worried that you might yeah. lose the run of himself and go, you're doing Star Trek, man. But I, I don't, I, I honestly don't. I think, look, at the end of the day is whatever he comes up with, whether it's completely new uh, in the JJ verse, which you're hoping for, mm. I think it's a win-win. We've got a big name. Look, come here. We know for a fact there is big Star Trek fans out there um, that are big in Hollywood. They're big actors, the whole lot. And, you know, we've mm. seen it. Like, I think it was mentioned. Like, you know, people are looking to get the cameo roles and Discovery and stuff like that. That's it. It's great. Look, go back to the 90s. Look at Whoopi Goldberg. And kudos attached to Trek again. You know? Exactly. And it, it look, it makes Star Trek, like, come here, Whoopi Goldberg, in fairness to her, did wonders for Star Trek again because she had such a big, huge fan base back in that stage. And mm. straight away, you had Whoopi Goldberg fans that would never even think of watching Star Trek. Watch it because she was in it. And they got hooked, which is brilliant. So that's it. That's fair it. play to uh, Quentin Tarantino. Fair play to JJ getting them on board. I hope the movie comes about. Whatever it is, I can only see it being good for Star Trek. It's going to get people to the cinema. Yeah, They're going to watch it because it's going to be a huge hype. Um, hopefully it is well written as well. and more fans and then hopefully the spin off from that is watch the shows and stuff like that exactly brilliant cool and on that bombshell I think we'll wrap it up um, but like you said earlier uh, Chris I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of their day and uh, you know we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year or Happy Holidays depending on what you celebrate around this lovely blue marble that we live in and uh, yeah I think the next time we meet we'll be so so close to have Star Trek Discovery return and yes. uh, we'll be talking more Trek very very soon uh, so big happy Christmas guys uh, be safe over the holidays um, I hope you enjoy time with the family and Doctor Who Christmas Day oh I can't yeah. wait lovely maybe the we should doctor. do a bit of a cast on that maybe you never know yeah maybe yeah the new Doctor so interesting can't wait can't wait can't wait that's little holiday traditions I just love I'm watching kind of Netflix of Back to the Future on there as well so that's going to have to be indulged so over the festive season so Man. anyway on that note guys Slanga Fowl Ihawa and uh, happy Christmas see you later bye bye